I got their little uh, springtime thing here. Oh, those pork chops look good. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome to a Saturday morning vlog, I guess. Now, I don't normally film vlogs, uh, but I decided, oh, why not? I don't have anything special planned today. I um, actually, I do have a few things special planned today. I just met a subscriber, a very nice man. Uh, he bought something from the old curiosity shop and he's somewhat local so we met at a spot here in Philly. I gave him the item that he purchased. We had a nice conversation and it was really nice to meet you. You know who you are. Uh, I don't get to meet subscribers very often and so Boy, it means a lot to me when I do because it helps me put human faces uh, behind those uh, screen names. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. After that, I went to the 9th Street Post Office because I had boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes to take and ship. Uh, so I did that. What did I do after that? I think I went and got myself another cup of coffee. How many cups do you drink per day? I think I just slurped. I drink maybe two or three. But caffeine has no effect on me. I am like this. Naturally. I can drink a cup of coffee at 12 o'clock at night, get in bed at 12.30 and fall asleep and sleep all night. And that's not decaffeinated either. Alright, what, what are we going to do today? Uh, I just went to a Goodwill here in South Philly. I don't usually go to Goodwill's on Saturday or Sunday. I never go on Sunday. But I went today and I bought four salt, salt and pepper shakers. Now there's nothing outstanding about these. They're just the standard little glass salt and pepper shaker that you would see on uh, restaurant tables, diner tables and that kind of thing. 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. This design is pretty classic. They're not marked on the bottom, so who knows? Hawking, Hazel, Hazel, Atla um, Hazel Atlas, lots of folks made them. But um, the main reason why I got these is for the lids. Um, I don't know how well you can see. You see, it actually says stainless steel on the top, which is no big deal. But these are nice old original lids. You can get reproduction lids. Most of them are made in China and it's very inexpensive metal. Uh, the threads are not as deep. It's flimsy. Uh, the stainless steel, it's just not good quality. So these are really nice, heavy, good lids. Um, I may need these lids as replacement lids on some other pieces of glass. So. Um, if I have to sacrifice these salt and pepper shakers for their lids, mm, I'm okay with that. Alright, I'm going to put these back in the bag and put them aside. Oh, I know. Ooh, do you remember all that really nice uh, Harlequin that I bought and showed you the other day in the basket? Well, it's all cleaned up. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, now I'm going to walk two blocks behind me to the Philly AIDS thrift store. I might do some filming, I might not, we'll see what happens. And then after that, I'm chasing down a lead. I have a scoop that there is a 1880s East Lake walnut marble top table not too far from here and the price is right. So we're going to go check that out as well. Alright, it's Saturday morning in Philly. 
What are you guys doing on Saturday morning all across the world? Well, I'm glad you're sharing some time with me. Let's go. Well, here we are upstairs on the second floor of the furniture department, and I am doing a voiceover because, as usual, the music in this store is pretty pumping. Now, to be honest, I really didn't see anything that excited me all that much. You never really know in a shop like this. I guess you never really know in any shop. I sometimes find gems and really good deals and sometimes it's just eh, today was just eh, but we're going to walk around a little bit just on this one floor and then head to another uh, shop around the corner. This I think is a homemade gizmo. It's supposed to look like uh, I think a steampunker got together and took an old 1920s handheld massager that, and stuck it on some other type of an electronic box and try to make a quack medical device out of it. I recognize those components and they really don't go together. So, um, alright, I'm going to step back and just let you watch me roam around here. Uh, we won't be too long up here on the furniture floor. As I said, there wasn't really a whole lot to see. But, where do you get to the next store? I found a couple of gems. Stay tuned for that.
Well, now I'm in a store on South Street called Retrospect. I have enjoyed this shop for many years. Uh, they have gotten to a lot more vintage clothing than they used to. They used to have more furniture and bric-a-brac, uh, but that has dwindled down and they do a lot of uh, clothing sales now. I think there's more money in it for them uh, on South Street. 1930s bedroom dresser there, you can see. There's a nice old uh, clock. I like this a lot with the acorns on it. Uh, I guess it was... Oh, it's Bavarian. Uh, reminds me of a piece I had last Christmas with pine cones on it. There's an Art Deco clock from the 30s in a Bakelite case. Mm, let's see. Oh, I wanted to check out this lamp. I wasn't certain whether it was old or not, and um, I'm actually convinced that it's not. Probably brass made in India in the last 30 years or so. Oh, old iron sides. Boy, prints and bookends and lamps and you name it. So popular in the 20s. A nice, elegant cane, um, a depression glass bowl there in amber. A lone dresser lamp. I don't know why I'm narrating like you can't see, but I just don't want to sit here and not say anything. I'm vo I'm doing a voiceover again because of the music. Mm-hmm. Everybody's favorite. Milk glass. Well, maybe not everybody's favorite. That was cute. The bride and groom. Probably a little made in Japan thing. And then a buttons and bows hat. Is that buttons and bows? Something like that. Now, you know, I really looked at this because I was hoping this would be something made in the 1930s uh, by one of the great designers of that era. There were no marks on it, and the more I looked at it, I thought, no, I think this is something that that is modern. But it has that minimalist sort of Art Deco feel of the 30s. I hope I didn't make a big mistake there. Good design. I don't know why that graffiti is by the fire hydrant. Some barware there, maybe Thorpe glass, I'm not sure. Some Hawking Royal Ruby mugs. Uh, some Blendo. I see hairpin there by Hazel by uh, Hazel Atlas. Now you know I was looking for that yellow Pyrex bowl to match my primary set. These caught my eye because I remember, oh, about a month or so ago, Will over at Will's Thrifting Ventures, he uh, thrifted a cocktail shaker, which I think is Bartlett Collins, and I think that's what those tumblers were. I'm going to go back and look at those here in a second while I'm filming, but I came over to this shelf here hoping to find a yellow Pyrex bowl. Didn't find one. Four D-handle anchor hocking mugs in white, which don't do nearly as well as the Jadeite, but I didn't think a set of four of those for $16 was bad at all for the white. Now we'll go back to these. I don't know, but I think this is Bartlett Collins, and I think uh, it matches your cocktail shaker, Will. So, hey, if you're watching, take a look at your cocktail shaker and let me know. Those weren't very expensive, and I know he is putting together like a vintage bar kind of a scene. Uh, or not seen, but, you know, a vintage bar. Oh, let's flip through a couple of the LPs just for kicks and jollies. Why not?
Anybody remember these? That one caught my eye. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, when your lover has gone. I hear you. Teresa Brewer, put another nickel in. She, had, it's just, she isn't singing the Nickelodeon tonight, is she? Her lover is gone, but she's got that pointy bra on, right? <gasps> oh, now this. Okay. This is always going to remind me of a wonderful early spring evening when I was a small kid. And my cousins and my brother, we all were uh, put in our pajamas and taken to the drive-in to see that darn cat. I talked about that before, um, but that's a memory that I always have. My aunt and uncle took us, and ooh, in the back of the station wagon in our pajamas, watching that darn cat and eating all kinds of food that we normally wouldn't eat, you know, snacks, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a memory, a fond memory. Didn't cost a whole lot of money, but it was a blast. Who else did that? Going to the drive-in movie in your pajamas. Mm-hmm. Okay, about to wrap it up in this store, I think. Um, I did buy two things. I promise you two or three things that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to make you wait. But I guess I'm going to... What are we going to do now? Oh, a piece of uh, carnival glass with cherries in the middle of it. I wish that it were purple or green and not that ubiquitous marigold, which is okay, but it's so common... So, I didn't buy it. Uh, let's see. We were just talking about rings the other day, but this is not this this is not that early 1930s banded rings by Hawking. This is a later version with painted stripes on it. So, but not from the uh, early 30s. Well that, well, that was fun. You never know what you're going to find in the Philly Aids thrift shop. And I found something. Then I went around the corner onto South Street to a shop called Retrospect, and I found something else. Two pieces I bought today. We're going to call this a tale of two pictures. Okay, this one came from Philly Aids Thrift, and this one came from the Retrospect, the little secondhand shop across the street on South Street. Which one is more valuable? Which one is older? Do you like them both? Is one American made and one not? Well, I'm certain this one is not American made. This one is made in Japan, probably 1920s or 30s. And, uh, well, it's actually marked on the bottom, Japan, made in Japan. I know you're not going to be able to see that. Maybe you can. And so I really like the colors. Um, it's well done i like the the relief that uh pattern that we see on the side and um this oh well i paid eight dollars for it you can't see it in the sun i have to pull it back like this i paid eight dollars for it and i think it's pretty attractive and it's a nice break from all of the luster wear and nippon which i love but this is a different form and a different design so i like that this one on the other hand was a real find now majolica has been made for a long time and there are different definitions depending on what century you're in but let's talk about the majolica that we think of from the 1850s onward developed in england minton made a lot of it and it's tin glazes the glaze is colored it's a they're colored tin glazes, and it's applied right onto the unfired uh, pottery, which gives us these wonderful rich colors, and the sun is probably washing it out. But here is this wonderful bird. You see the bird on there? Where's the bird? There's the bird. And uh, a branch. Is it a dogwood? Probably so. And pink. There seems to always be pink on Majolica. Anybody know why? I guess just because they could. And in this case, the pink is on the inside. Now, it's completely unmarked on the bottom, which is what I expect. You can see there. Nothing on the bottom at all. 
And um, whether this is uh, an English piece or not, I don't know, but I have a feeling that this is the real stuff from the 18, probably the 1880s, at least before 1891, when items were then marked with their country of origin. Uh, there are, now this is the good side, right? The display side with the branch and the bird. This side, there are two little chips up at the top that uh, have just sort of, uh, there's one right there. Uh, I guess it's not little. And then there's another one right there. Uh, it's, someone has colored it in and so it looks pretty, pretty good to me. Uh, I'm not terribly worried about those chips. A lot of majolica tends to be tends to be chipped. I paid uh, fifteen dollars for this, and I expected to sell for at least fifty dollars and upwards, even with those little chips on the top of the back. Uh, and this could do quite this could do uh, much better than fifty dollars. I'm not really sure. I'm not a Majolica collector. I'm going to throw it up there in an auction and we'll let the Majolica folks decide what the, what they would like to pay for it. But I was excited to find it uh, for that price in that little thrift shop on South Street in Philadelphia. Two pieces of really nice pottery. Uh, this probably just for me to keep from the 1930s. This is a little gift item that would have been bought and given to someone's uh, to someone's mother. And there's the poem there for mother. I won't read it right. It's kind of hard to read with the fancy gold behind it. And uh, a little green mat. And then this frame is made out of metal and it's got a stippling applied paint over it, which was a popular thing to do mid 20s into the earl into the mid 30s. Uh, stippling was very popular. And this was just a a little cheap gift for mother, probably bought um, in a five and dime store. I'll read it to you sometime, but we won't do it now. Okay. Now what? Did I get that marble top table or not? Let's go find out. Well, I did go and buy that beautiful marble top table. I'm gonna speak to you now, but it's very windy out here, so when I get inside, if all I hear is the sound of the wind, I'll have to do a voiceover. Um, but uh, here's the marble top, and the marble tops on these tables are often uh, white or brown, and sometimes very dark brown, and then there's uh, odd combinations. Sometimes there's marble that's on the pinkish side. This reminds me of little calamari pieces, or maybe pimento loaf. It's an unusual piece of marble, I don't know what you call it. But that's original marble. Uh, from the 1880s, which goes on this table. These are usually made of oak or mahogany. Usually, uh, I'm sorry, not oak or mahogany, walnut or mahogany. And sometimes with some applied veneers. There's a burl veneer that's applied here, which is really pretty. I don't know if you can see how well you can see. Now the marble, oh, you uh, just sit. Oh boy, oh boy, the wind was blowing. Uh, so I'm inside now. Uh, somebody put glue on here. I wish they had the marble always just sits on top of these tables. I'll get that glue off. It's not a big deal, but I uh, I'm just kind of lake style. There. So we're talking 1880s uh, And it's all machine done. This is that uh, machine mass-produced American furniture Which gave way to the arts and crafts movement this fussy furniture that needs to be dusted. Look at all that. And what's nice is it's got all four of its original, uh, I started to say polyester. Mm. It's got all four of its porcelain casters on the bottom. And these would often go missing. Those four por porcelain casters right there are worth 20 bucks just as the hardware. So again, 1880s, really nice. Uh, these tables are not in style at the moment, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it or that I'm going to not purchase them. This one, I don't know if I, it's probably going to be for sale. I've got some old Victorian furniture and storage that came down in the family, so this piece I actually think I'll sell. Paid 50 bucks for it, and I'll give somebody a good deal and probably sell it for about 150, which is a really good deal, especially because this is a beautiful piece of marble. It's not chipped or cracked. You'll see chips often. 
or cracks where they've been repaired or heavy scratches. They can even be stained if ink is spilled on them, that kind of thing. But this is really pretty marble and it's an unusual piece of marble as well. Once I get it all cleaned up uh, with the marble on top, I'll show it to you. Well, I was excited I haven't gotten any Victorian furniture in a while. What do you think? Okay, Majolica, Victorian furniture and salt and pepper shakers. What else can you ask for? Well, I need to go to the grocery store, so let's go to the grocery store. Uh, I may or may not take you with me. We'll just let that be a surprise. Driving over the old stone pavers in Philadelphia. Boy, that'll rattle your spleen. <laughs> let me concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, okay, I'm back from the grocery store. Uh, I went to Lidl, L-I-D-L. You may have that in your hometown. I'm not certain whether you do or not. I spent just over $50, $52 and something like that. And here's what I bought. A dozen eggs, celery stalks, which I like to cut up and snack on, a head of cabbage because it's gonna be cold again next week. Well, it's actually getting cold now. Uh, and we're gonna be in the 40s and 50s for many, 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 many days. I've got a ham in the freezer that I wanna use up before summertime and so I'm going to do ham and cabbage in, uh, in, in the slow cooker, probably throw some turnips in there, although I didn't buy any today. And I'll be able to eat off of ham and cabbage for a few days. Here is broccoli, yeah, and a head of cauliflower, red grapes, uh, oranges, uh, okay, oranges there. I was trying to see where they, it says a product of USA, but I'm not sure where in the US, California or Florida, I guess. I like pesto because I like to dip carrots in it. So I bought some pesto because I was out. This is drink mix, iced tea, lemon iced tea mix, five calories. You just dump them in the water and drink it. You know how that works. Barbecue sauce, cocktail sauce. And then over here, uh, I like plain fat, plain fat. I like plain non-fat Greek yogurt with no flavor and no sugar and no nothing. And a lot of you are going, Ugh. well, I like to put it on top of fresh fruit. You know, when you cut a lot of sugar out of your diet and you really get that sugar out of your system, you don't crave it. You don't, you don't, your body doesn't want it. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's kind of a shock if you're used to sugary yogurt with fruit on the bottom, but get that sugar out of your system and you'll love this and you can doctor it up. You can put some applesauce in it and some fruit and other things and it's really good. Um, uncured turkey bacon, which I like to have at breakfast time. Here are the carrots that I like to dip in the pesto. And I am uh, was watching Tarnished Treasures yesterday she tempted me with some wonderful salmon. I haven't had any nice fresh salmon in a while. And normally I walk down to, well, just a few blocks away. I go to Chinatown and get fresh fish, but I said, well, let me go ahead and buy this while I'm here in the grocery store. So uh, here's the salmon. Tarnished Treasures was making it with a delicious dill and mayonnaise uh, sauce on the top. So I'm gonna be cooking this tonight for dinner. And I'm either going to have cauliflower or broccoli with it. Haven't decided yet. And then the salads, <coughs> excuse me, are a little bit different than what you get at uh, Aldi. They're, the flavors are different. Aldi doesn't have this. Cranberry candied walnut, 210 calories. I love this salad. Um, I eat a lot of these at lunchtime. Savory spinach and with Dijon, here's another one. I think I got two of those. So actually I bought four, but before I put the camera on, I ate one for lunch. And during the cold season of the uh, fall and winter, th this is great to buy these and just throw them in the car when I head out for the day because uh, then I have lunch and I'm not tempted to stop and do fast food. Okay, that's everything. Probably the salmon was the most, I forget how much that was, but uh, just under, uh, just, just at about $55 for all of that. I got their little uh, springtime 
thing here. Oh, those pork chops look good. Uh, anyway, that's that. Okay, maybe I'll come back later and show you the salmon. I don't know if I'll have time or not, but hey, I want to say thanks everybody for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Have yourselves a nice weekend, everyone. So long for now.